Mm -hmm. I know. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. This is our August member meeting for Placerville Arts Association. I'm Linnell Phillips. Today, Maggie Kastner, Placerville Arts Association member, will offer a presentation about her pastel pet portraits and commissions. And for our member share today, Matt Harlan will talk about his experience at the Butte County Fire where he lost his studio and how the pieces he recovered enhance his artwork. If you would like to be a presenter or do a member share in 2023, please contact me, Linnell Phillips at AOL.com. We plan to be back in a physical meeting no later than January and also plan to continue to offer a Zoom component at the meetings. And I'm going to let Sue Wickersham introduce our presenter for the day, Maggie Kasner. Everybody should be able to share their screens. We set that up already. So take it away, Sue. Okay. Well, thank you to all of you for spending your Sunday with us today. Um, I haven't been outside much, but I think it's hot. And I just turned the air conditioning on. So <laughs> as I get older, I get wimpier. So, um, and I want to thank Maggie for being our guest speaker. And um, I don't wanna do a traditional kind of um, intro. Maggie can talk about herself, but I wanna tell you how I met Maggie. Um, I think it was Facebook, although she thinks it was ne next door, but I wasn't on next door then. Um, either way, I saw she posted um, pictures of her paintings, of her animal portraits. And I was so blown away that I messaged her told her how much I liked her work and that I thought she should enter the mother load show. This was for last year. Um, I think I scared her. <laughs> she, <laughs> she was a little afraid to enter. I was convincing her. We became pals talking back and forth and I didn't know where Maggie lived. And then I don't, I don't know, somebody said something. It turns out she lives in Placerville. And I was shocked because I, I figured her base way far away. So I told her about PAA and she joined and um, I'm glad that she did. Um, we've had chats on the phone and we haven't met in person yet, except for here. And um, I hope to meet with her and someday and talk to her in person, Maggie. Someday we'll do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I've, I've, she's been fun and I really love her work and her, um, I don't know if it's a philosophy around art, but I really connect to it. And um I'm just glad that she's here to talk about her pet portraits because they are to me amazing. And I and that she also she didn't do it, she didn't enter the Netherload last year. Hope you will this year, but she did enter. Come on now. <laughs> she did enter um I'm our listening to show. the Placerville Arts and, Association. And she won my her, friend Matt is a member and he's supposed to speak. So Martha, you're on, uh, we're hearing you, so you might, Wait a minute, you they can to, hear me. <laughs> well, you might want I'm to sorry, I mute. thought it was That's muted. Okay. Yeah, we're going to, I'm going to ask everybody to mute themselves when Maggie um, starts, but Maggie did win on our, in our um, member show, a first and second place in the animal category, right, Maggie? Yeah. Yeah. And you were pretty excited. So was I, they were great. And since have, and you since won other things in our member shows, correct? Uh, yeah, I won a second place with my white tiger at the last show, and I got an honorable mention with a, a dog that I, it was a commission that I got back and put it in the show and got an honorable Perfect. mention for it. And now that she says commissions, she is very busy. Last time we talked, she was booked to no, through November with her animal pet portrait commission. So I'm very impressed with Maggie and her work, and I'm going to let her take it from here, but that's kind of how we met and I'm glad that we did and that she joined PAA and we became friends. Thanks, Maggie. So if everybody wants to put themselves on mute, otherwise I'll let Linnell do it. And um, if you want to answer, ask questions, I guess it's okay, Maggie, if they unmute and they can also use the chat and I'll monitor that. So take it away, thanks. Okay, well, first off, when I joined the PAA at the urging of Sue, um, I was blown away by the artists and their work. And when I took my two little measly paintings to that show, this was uh, well, almost a year ago now, it was last fall. 
um, I said, oh, I don't belong here, you know, <laughs> and like, like most of you I don't I don't know maybe most of you but I'm never satisfied with what I do you know um I technically started just about two years ago in mm -hmm. doing anything um I did this dog which all I have is a picture on here it was an old girlfriend's dog I don't know if you guys can see that it's a Westie I have since done this one was dead and all they had was a certain photograph and between that and a blue heron, um, that's when I sort of fell in love with the pastels and um, went on YouTube a little bit and messed around, you know, and and when I posted this little guy, not him, but another one, um, it was it'll be a year ago uh, this coming September next month. Uh, that's when I started getting people wanting to see if I could paint their animals and all I'd done are just you know sketches most of the time that's how everybody starts out right <laughs> just sketching but I had a family to raise and all this and and didn't have time for anything else and it's nice to be retired and I was looking for a way actually to be able to stop driving a school bus and I've managed to do that with this um, so I'm usually booked about three months ahead and it is just commission work um it's um i i guess i'm fairly inexpensive i'm a little more expensive on my website and i've only just now uh started sending people to the website but um i've got several repeat customers and stuff um i have a little um i guess it's a it's a little video that I did on here. I'm going to do my best to make this work. I actually did it with somebody one time and asked, and it worked. So I'm going to give it a stab so you, can, you guys can see what I've done. But it's it's mostly just the stuff that I think is maybe worth looking at, except the horse and the girl. So don't look at that too close. Um, let's see if I can get this right. And... Okay, so I got to go down here. Are you guys seeing that dog? Yeah. Okay. It's just a little video of stuff I've done. He's cute. That one was an oil, it's just my own dog. I like you did your slideshow. Good for you. Well, at least it worked. I wasn't it really did. sure it was going to work. <laughs> oh, good for you. So while I did a dry run with some friends this morning, I says, I got to make this work. And I don't know. And I got a Mac Pro because it's the when you get photographs, they're they're amazing on there. And I can do more with them than I could on my tablet. And um, I think that's really helped me a lot lately because I get some pretty to me, awful photographs, you know, once you decide you need to paint them and they're asking you to paint it, you look and you say, uh-oh, you know, 
and they may want it to look like that shepherd that shepherd I did with the trees in the background and he was in the snow um I still think is probably the best thing I've ever done it was like about a 12 by 14 I've got two more pictures by the lady I did that for that I'm going to be doing in in the future but that was such a good photograph it was a, a joy to paint it you know what I mean mm -hmm. um uh, it, it's it's tough when you don't I, this is all new to me you know as far as uh going on and trying to get it lighter so that I can see more detail you know and what are you using I, Maggie on your for, I, what program are you using for that I don't really have a program I I use I stick it on Google on my Google photos and I'm able to go in and and edit it a little bit you know, so I don't do anything real fancy because I'm 72 and getting pretty old to learn new stuff, you know, but I'm working at it and um, most of them turn out okay. There's a few that don't, you know, but it's, it is what it is. So and what do you eat. do when you get a bad photo? Yeah, that was my uh, question. Yeah, <laughs> I, first thing I do is tell people, please send it to my email because it uses more, more pixels. And so it will be better than it is in a text rather than taking it from the text and moving it myself. Um, I do that, then I stick it on Google and I, I play with Google. I may save two uh, pictures that I edit. One will be a whole lot lighter and one might be, you know, have a little more detail for me to, to see, because some of it will be so shadowed, I can't see anything, you know? I can't see where the nose is and, and or where the nostrils are and for it to look like that person's pet you, you need to have those details and uh, so I've found that even though I'm I'm doing okay it's um it's a process you know so after I do that then I, I don't know how many of you do pet portraits or work in pastels but I'll do a sketch and then if I need it larger I do a, a grid I think most of you already know that kind of stuff. I learned that on YouTube because I I thought, wow, how am I going to draw that really big? And I was using one of these. Uh, it's a measuring thing that my husband has that it'll open and close this way. And so I'll measure between the nose and a certain part of the ear. And then I'll know that how far it has to be on my on my sketch if I'm just to make sure everything's in place. <laughs> I don't know if you guys know what I'm talking about. Yeah, but I was yeah, wondering, I, have you heard of the, the Lucy? Is that what it's called? It's no, I've never, no. You're talking about where it's a photograph that works like a projector or something? Yeah, it projects um, the it picture. I have not used one, but it projects the picture. And then you, I don't know, you guys might know, you can enlarge it, make it smaller, whatever. But it's, I, I think I it's think, called Lucy. I, I think what it does is you've got, you've got a piece of glass that uh, is between you and the what you're trying to do so you can see there and it, it reflects down on your paper so you can it, it's like you're trying to draw on you, you can see the the image in front it's of like you like tracing the image like a, yeah. yeah i yeah. think that's what it is oh wow well no i don't do that <laughs> you do um, it the hard way <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess I do it the hard way, but you know, anyway, it, it does not well, I too commend bad. you for that. I've had I need to learn well, I'm sure I can get some. I need to get some larger um pick, you know, I've had to tape four pieces of paper together to make to, to make it larger, you know. Yeah. yeah. Measuring everywhere and making the sketch larger and that kind of stuff. And yeah, and then I use that that device I told you about, and I measure to make sure. You know, it might need to be a little bit bigger on the nose. It might be a little smaller. And anyway, that's it's a little bit of a process. I really couldn't show you. I don't have all that stuff with me. I'm here in Lakewood because I did a, a portrait of the two little Westies sitting on the lawn, I guess. And they're up there. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's a girl that I went to high school with. So anyway, um, there is a lady that I've known for several years that when I first showed her a sketch of mine, and this was about three years ago, um, and it was just in pencil and it was of my horse's head. 
And this is what really got me going because I, I did this sketch, you know, I said, well, and I showed it to her. And this lady is a, an amazing artist. I'm going to show you what this lady can do in a minute. But she said, oh, she says, that's very good. Now you need to finish it. And I'm looking at her like, okay, how do I do that? You know, <laughs> I don't know. So she talked about getting blending sticks. And, and I says, oh, I remember those, you know, from like high school. I had a, a semester of art in high school and that's all I've ever had. So I started blending things and she told me about turning it upside down. And then you see the, sh the shading better. I never do that, but I did it with this particular picture. She says, because then you're not looking at a horse. You're just looking at where the shadows belong, you know, and, and, and the values, you know, the lighter to dark and all that. Six months ago, I didn't know what a value was, you know, but I just see it. I just do it. And um, anyway, this is something I'm going to show you that she did. It took her about two years and she worked in acrylics. And it took her so long because she had a lot of other things she was doing. But this shows you what a good artist this lady is. So it gave me, because when she looked at it, when I was done, she said, oh, that's frameable. That's frameable. And I'm like, okay, well, it's still sitting in my sketchbook. I never did frame it. But this is what she did. This is how good this woman is. I don't know if you see that very well. It's a horse's eye. Yeah. And it, it really is when you see it in person, it's about four feet by five feet. Wow, this thing is huge, and she got uh, several thousand dollars for doing this. She used cool. to do a lot of um, flowers, and this is the woman that has been kind of coaching me. She has moved to Oregon, but I'll send her my stuff. Oh, she said that's very good. You need to do this, do this, and then she sent me to a woman whose name is Emma Colbert, and she is a, an animal artist that works in pastels in. Um, in the UK. And then I came back to my friend and I said, she uses velour because I didn't know anything about different surfaces even. I, I've learned all this in just the last year, you know? So I've got velour. It, it makes a lot of your animals look a lot softer. The edges are a lot softer. Um, it's a very dusty surface to work on. I've learned as you work on it and you do have to be sure and, and press you because it doesn't really blend real well so you have to press your pastels in the surface and as you do that it gets in and um and then i use a little spray can like you uh to get the dust off of your computer and stuff and i use that and you ought to see stuff fly you know so i also have one of those air purifiers in my room and i flip that sucker on when i you when i work on that surface and a lot of pictures that aren't very good, that aren't very sharp, I will use that surface. But when I do get a really good sharp picture, I've gone to pastel mat. And it's Claire Fontaine pastel mat. And I just love it. It blends really nice. It holds the pastel really good. And um, it's hard to like shake it off. It really gets into the surface, even though it doesn't have any nap. And it holds several layers. I love it. But does, does that come in other in a variety of colors like back to it you, does yeah it do, does do you leave uh, the background sometimes or do you always paint the background um no i don't always paint the background i've i there's a few where i know i'm doing a whole cat instead of just a face and um i didn't charge them for the whole body so i don't throw anything in the background i just like there was one cat there i don't know if you saw it and it's i just Put a little stuff on the bottom you know like it was sitting on something and uh, mm -hmm. no so i don't there's a few that i don't go all the way but but uh some i do just depends like the cat in the sink i was more proud of the faucet than anything else you know <laughs> I, I remember you telling me about that yeah it yeah. was good yeah but um and so a lot i've learned from this this uh, emma colbert uh how to pick a palette you know, and you look at the colors in your in your uh, photograph and and I do that. So I've picked a palette for my next. Oops, sorry, little girl. Disturbed one of the dogs I have here. So I picked the palette for my next painting and you have everything that I'll be using in it, which is quite a bit of stuff. 
but it was it, it's a lion kind of hiding but it, there's flowers and leaves and it was kind of a photo op that this guy did messing with his own photos he's from the Czech Republic I just went online because I'm not a photographer you know so I went online and I'm on Facebook and Instagram and uh, follow a lot of different photographers and I emailed him and asked him you know he has all these wild animals you know and he go what he does is he teaches people how to take photography and he does all these tours with them and he's got some phenomenal pictures like that tiger I did and the monkey and the baby those were both his his pictures and I showed him a little of my work I sent it to him and I said may I have your permission to use your photographs I said they're amazing and and I'm just kind of liking to branch out a little bit and from the commissions and he sent me back a message. Says, yeah, use anything you like. And I'm like, whoa, okay. That's <laughs> Not nice. like the people in the U.S. They don't want you using anything. But yeah, he's just a real nice man. And I've gotten that from several people, you know. But most of them are out of the country. <laughs> Have you sent your work from his photos to him to show him? I mean, pictures I did. Of yeah, or... each time I have because if it's only two, I'm mm -hmm. too busy doing commissioned. I can't. I don't have time to do all the other stuff. So that's why I took this trip up here. I do have two commissioned ones to do, but one is going to be a piece of cake. It's just almost black and gray. It's it's another Westie, but she wants it real dramatic. So everything is black. Even half his face is almost completely black. And it's a white dog, you know, mm -hmm. and it's 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 a nice photograph, but that won't take very long, a couple hours and I'll be done. And um they're friends, though. They're personal friends. And I wasn't really going to charge them, but they gave me a hundred bucks. So I'll make them. Have a you nice. ever uh, turned a commission down because the photo was so bad? One. One. This this uh, woman wanted me to do five dogs all on the same surface, a nice big surface. And just in her explaining to me, I said, it's probably going to be about five hundred and fifty dollars you know just kind of rounding it up and then she told me that four of the five dogs were dead they were deceased and sent me the pictures she had they were just there I couldn't even do anything with them you know oh they look good on my computer I said well maybe I better come and look at what you got because it it was uh, I turned her down you know mm -hmm. they were just really really bad most of them the dog was running and it was blurred and you can't see it. They're not like a close up. I, I tell people I've actually gone to people's houses and helped them photograph their dog. And I, I've got an iPhone and I get down at eye level with them. You need to be on eye level. People are always doing this upper shot and the dog's looking up and their nose looks twice as big as it really is. And, you know, it's like you want a good painting. You need a good photograph. <laughs> and I so yeah, I have offered, you know, free of charge if they live within 20 you know miles of me I'll go help them take pictures and I've done that a couple of times Otherwise, I'm curious I, sure I'm sorry honey I'm That's curious right. on the <clears throat> the one you're going to do with the dramatic black with the white oh, yeah. dog will you just start on a black velour background uh I don't have one right now okay because I, I was thinking that'd make it a lot easier <laughs> oh it would absolutely and I did have one but when she sent that to me I didn't have one so I, I may end up having to go ahead and, and color it in with, with either, you know, like a very dark purple or because um, I use purple a lot of times instead of black. You know, there's so many shades of gray and black that you can do a lot. And purple really looks black if it's a nice dark purple, like, I don't know, like, like this or like this, it'll look black on the surface. I don't know if you guys can see those. So since you have those in your hand, Maggie, what kind of pastels do you like? Brands? Do you like, do you use pencils? Um, what do I, you like I do use? for a lot of the fine stuff. I do use a lot of different pastel pencils. You know, I have these. My favorite are the um, pit pencils. But sometimes on certain surfaces and on certain pastels, the pits won't work very well. But then I have these um, Carbothello and they will go on when the other ones don't. So I've got a plethora of colors. 
and it's still not enough. You know, I've got two like this, and then I have another whole set of the of the uh, pit pencils, and you just start collecting. You know, these are Jacksons, and they're a soft oh. pastel. They're especially soft, so I don't do any fine work with these. You need them. I still use. I do use soft pastels and for some fine work, and I break them. But those are unisons. And they're probably my favorite of the unisons. So I did. You can. I guess you can get Jacksons. I thought you could only get those from the UK, or I might be thinking of another do. brand. You do. You do. You get them from the UK. You also okay. get your. Um, uh, what did I just say? The um, uniform. Yeah, those from. They're, they're all made in the UK, but you can get them from Dakota Pastels, which I believe is in New York, because that's where I order them. Okay. And otherwise, it's it's a real pain considering the way that the um, economy is right now and the trying to get things from the UK, that kind of thing. So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm getting most of my stuff now through Dakota, although I did go on eBay and I got a whole set of these brand new unisons that was the Emma Colbert animal thing. And I said, whoa, and I got them for like half price because the person who bought the yeah, app was not. I don't know if they were deceased or what, but all of a sudden they were for sale for next to nothing. I snatched them up. <laughs> so good for you. you. Know, do what you can. And um, but I'm I'm having a ball and yet I'm still learning a lot, you know, just trial and error sometimes. And I'll go on different little sheets that I cut and uh, just practice little things. Mm -hmm. Marks stuff. You do all kinds of stuff. And I'm kind of anxious to start some kind of, um, and that'll be in my own free time, but doing some kind of uh, landscape or seascape, something like this, you know, but my, my favorite will always be the animals. It's, it's something that I just really, really love. And, and um, have you ever had a difficult client? Excuse me, a difficult client? Like they saw your painting and they weren't happy or um, they no, to I haven't yet. I, I did have one. Um, I did this uh, black dog and the collar was blue and I was totally done and the collar was blue and it, it, it did have a lot of detail in the collar. And just because of the kind of, you know, material it was made from fabric or whatever. And he said, could you make the collar black? And I went, uh, sure, you, all right, but your picture, it's blue. He says, yeah, I know, but I don't like, so I had to go back and that, it, it didn't take that long. It took about an hour just to do the collar. Wow. But um, I ended up being able to get it in black in about 45 minutes and he was happy. So. Do you take deposits on commissions? I do. Oh yeah. Good. I kind of cover myself because I'm using a lot of materials you know the pastels and the uh, surfaces and my time but I don't cover all that I I ask for a, like a 50 50 dollar deposit on anything up to about 250 dollars after that I ask for 50 percent and I haven't had any problems at all so far Good. but you gotta watch out I had I did put something for sale on the Facebook marketplace I won't use that anymore I got this thing on Messenger to sell it. They wanted to buy it. And I thought, okay. So I sent them a PayPal invoice. I said, I, I won't work with Messenger. I want your email if you want to work with me. Because Messenger gets, you know, hacked all the time. So they did. They sent me their email. And it looked legit. And then it was $5.50 for the tiger. Um, next thing in the... I see in PayPal, I get this thing from PayPal saying you've got money. So I go to PayPal and it says that it was um, holding. And I thought, I've never seen that before. Why would they be holding it? So I went to uh, some of their things that tell you why they might be holding the money on something. And it says maybe it's more than the usual amount that you get or you're new. And I thought, well, I'm not new. And yeah, it's a little more than what I usually ask for because I've usually asked for up to 250, you know, somewhere around there. And um, 
it turned out that this guy, he sent me his address, you know, he wanted to, uh, it to go by UPS. And I went down to the place nearby, had it all packed up. And then I ended up, I, I just didn't feel good, you know, so I, I called, called PayPal and they gave me a call back. I didn't send the painting, but I did have an invoice saying it was going to be sent from UPS and how much the shipping was. And I put the shipping on it and um, he said, yeah, PayPal puts that on there, blah, blah, blah. And I thought, you know, I'm not going to ship it till it's paid. So when I called PayPal, they ended up calling me back and they asked me to send them a picture of the uh, email I got from PayPal. So I did. And he said, this is a phishing thing. This is not from us. He said, will you please send this to, and he gave me an address for something phishing. And he says, they do work with the police on these things. So I sent it all in. And then this guy got a hold of me a day later. And he says, so, so do you have a copy of the shipping? I said, I already sent that to you. And then he says, well, yeah, well, I don't seem to have it. And I said, well, maybe I just shouldn't send the painting if you're that disorganized. And I, but I still tried to make him think it was sending. So, you know, the law had some way to, you know, I tried to make it last. And it lasted about two days. And then I never heard from him again. <laughs> so now I just got rid of the whole thing. So you got to watch. It looks like an email from PayPal. And and it's not. But how how would you have known, except for your intuition, that it was not right? Did PayPal tell you? PayPal told me because but I, I mean, you but, you went but, off your but, intuition. Let let, ahead, let me let me say, never respond to an email. Always get on your browser and go directly to the provider to see if there have been any changes to your account. Never respond to a text message. Never click through from an email. Always go on the internet through your Chrome browser or your Edge browser, log into your PayPal account or whoever else, Wells Fargo Bank, whoever else, only go directly to their official website and look for your transactions there. I did. And it was and, there. But it was holding. Are, right. And, and holding or pending. And I've had somebody Correct. do this to me also. Yeah. on an eBay purchase where they didn't clear the money right. um, from the account. So you have to go directly to those people, such as PayPal, right. and look at your account there. But like, like she says, be very, very careful. I mean, we're even having to deal with right now something in PAA where one of our members forgot they entered the member show, canceled their credit card transactions. And so we're the merchant and we're being charged for the transaction. Jerry's dealing with it right now. So, you know, there, there's all, but, but for, for what you said, Sue, like I say, never, never click through. And that's very interesting though, Maggie, what you said about it actually showed up on your live PayPal account. And it, only it, your position. It, it did. But when I talked directly with PayPal, um, it said pending because it was asking me to pay that amount. But it didn't say that on the account. And uh -huh. I said, oh, really? This is real fun. Uh -huh. you know? <laughs> and they were waiting for me to come in and go ahead and send it. And I thought, uh-uh. <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's what they said. It was in there. It had been put in there by these crooks, you know, to for me to send them the money. And I thought, oh, you guys are amazing. And I even went on Google Earth and looked up the address they gave me that I was supposed to send this painting to. And it existed. It was a real address, but it was in Oregon. Yeah. Anyway, I, a lot of it was intuition because I've never done this before, you know. I have shipped a painting before, but it was to my, like my cousin. So that's a, a whole different ball game. But uh, I'm learning a lot, not just about painting, but about, you know, how to take care of different transactions. Anything looks funny. Anything looks fishy at all. Just don't do it. You know, it's not worth it. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. And I don't know how many are on today that actually do pastel paintings. Can you guys raise your hands? I've been playing with oil pastel. 
Like, oh, have you? Yeah. I don't, I'm not, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> well, fun, to start by playing, believe me. <laughs> I have a, I have a half finished dog that's in oil pastel over here. <laughs> I have a few. I just, well, I'm here to do some stuff too. I'm hopefully going to get something out for the mother load show. Um, because I've got time. I'm dog sitting and house sitting. And uh, one of them will be the thing that I'm going to do now. And I always start with your darkest value because your lighter values go on top of that a lot easier than the other way around. I don't know why. I just know that that's what I was taught and it works. You know, your lighter, lighter values go on top of the darker values. So, but I still start in one corner partly because I'm right-handed. I start in the upper left corner and I work my way down like this. Otherwise you're getting stuff all over you and you can get it on your, on your sketch and just make a big mess of the whole thing before you've really even done anything. So it's best to get your, and when I get a, a sketch finished, I turn it over and I trace what I've done with a pastel pencil. And I do it depending on the surface I'm using, the color of the surface, either a, a darker one, or I try to try to make it so it's going to be similar to what colors I'm using. And I will trace every line, every dot, every whatever that I put in this sketch. And then I set it on the surface and I hold it with the pastel side down. And I start with an, I actually start like with an eraser like this. And while I'm holding it in place, I'm erasing my pencil sketch. And it's pressing my pastel sketch onto my surface. You have mm -hmm. to be careful. I was doing it with my thumbnail. And I found out that if you do that on the, the softer surface, like the um, velour, it'll leave an indent. So you don't want to do that. <laughs> so I use, a, you know, I use a, an eraser. And that works can, really, really well. Can you be a little rougher with the um, the pastel mat? Yes, with the pastel mat, you can be. I could use my nail or you could use some other little bit harder surface. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's it's just a very odd surface, but it's really becoming popular. It's a lot more expensive. But, you know, what isn't going to be if it works better? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Have, and it, it's have you just, tried it, any... Um, handmade pastels well the unison are handmade oh okay. all the unison are, are, are handmade that. yeah and people people will ask me sometimes about the different pastels and the different other mediums like your oils and your and your thing because I've, I've worked a little bit with oils I still want to do more I just need some time and I've worked with acrylic um this is before just playing with both all these different types of, of, you know, things anyway. So the, the oils are, you'll ruin your clothes. <laughs> you will for sure ruin your clothes. Um, it's not going to come out. Um, and it takes so long to dry. You can, and I did on one, I used um, a little more like turp with it, turpentine with my colors and it did dry a little quicker. But everywhere that I really look, before you can put any type of a, a a shellac or something that really helps to keep the surface, you know, well and and preserves it and all that, um, you're supposed to wait like a year for it to dry. And I thought, well, that's certainly not going to work with anything I'm doing right now, you know. So I, then, that was a, I was going to ask. Do you put a, a fix on on the pastel? You, you I do. I, I didn't before. If I, I noticed that if you use pastel papers of any kind, you uh, putting a fixative on it, it's, it's real iffy because it'll change the colors. Right. But on both the velour and the pastel mat, I can do that. But you have to have a good fixative. Hold on a second. Ah. I've tried a few different kinds. This one is Latour Sennelier, and they also make pastels. And it's a really, really nice fixative on that surface. Um, I just, I use a, when I'm, the surface I use when I'm putting my pastel, my 
gosh, my velour or my pastel mat on there. I use like frog tape to tape it to the surface. And it's a old drafting table that was free sitting out across the street. And I told my husband, I says, hey, go see that. How, what, by, what kind of shape is it in? And that's what I use. I use that. He filled in holes for me and sanded it down and got it really nice. And I dragged that thing in the house. And that's what I use. So I, while it's still taped and I'm finished, when I know I'm really done, I spray this. Uh, you're, I'm back about a foot and a half or so, and I spray it very lightly and I'll spray it about two times. And you still can take your finger and get some on it, but it keeps it from falling off if it gets bumped or anything. Um, anytime you, I always have to tell this to the to my clients, I, I tape a piece of paper that I've typed out and printed um, that their pastels actually will last longer than your oils or your acrylics because it's pure pigment. It has a binder, but it's still pure pigment. It isn't watered down the way some of your oils and your acrylics are. You just just don't get the, the vibrant color that you get, for me, that I do from the pastels. The uh, downside is that you can't mix your colors. You've got to have a huge palette of grays and a huge palette of greens and a huge palette of browns and this kind of thing to work with to get the right colors and i'm slowly getting there you know so do you have like i mean i'm assuming is unisong the handmade ones are they much softer than other brands they are so then do you have do you have a bunch of color backups so i, do, I mean what if yeah. you're do, yeah yeah, yeah. Like, i i have some hard pastels I have a couple different kinds. Um, what's it called? Prismacolor. Uh, have the little hard ones, and they're yeah. smaller. They're you know like this. Yeah. And a lot of times I might use this, like for whiskers, because they need to be fairly thin. You know, the dog will have a couple coming out of here, and so does a cat, and coming out this way. Um, sometimes I just take my softer pastel, like like this green, and I'll break it like that and then you get a really sharp edge and that's how you can get a really sharp edge that's that's very nice it really works really really nice so yeah you're going to break your pastels and you don't want to when you first get them they're just gorgeous you know like i've got a brand new set back here oh there go the dogs again hello where are you um Hey, hey, Maggie's hey. pet sitting if you guys haven't figured that out. The dogs are going off. So here's a brand new set. And they look like this. Oh, which what brand is that? That's Unison. It is. Okay, I know. It those. is. Oh, they're beautiful. Yeah. Only this is made for like um, landscapes and a particular landscape. But it's, um, I can't wait to give them a stab, you know. So those are new. And that Tony Elaine, he's a, he actually works with Unison. They have a lot of um, artists and Emma Colbert is one of them that they sponsor more or less because they use these pastels. Um, they're, they're just gorgeous. And I love the way they go on and the things that you can do with them. You know, you can do so many things with them and they'll, they'll blend so nicely. There's just a lot of things I like about them. The uh, other ones that I showed you, these, the Jacksons, those are also, they, they just look too uniform to be handmade. They say they are, and then maybe they cut them. I don't know. But um, mm -hmm. they're so soft that they crumble easy. And like I said, I'm only using this for certain parts. I won't be using it for the animal itself because even on the animal, I don't know if you've noticed, but some of them, I've got little marks for all their hairs. You know, if I get a really good photograph, sometimes I get a photograph that doesn't show that kind of detail. And I've done a lot like that and they've paid me the same amount, you know, and uh, I just don't show them on my, <laughs> on my little thing there, my little video. There's a lot that I, I don't like what I've done. I don't like the 
picture I showed you of the other Westie, the white one with the green background, the first one I showed, because that was one of the first ones I've ever done. And I see so many things I should have done and didn't do, you know. Well, you didn't know. You're, you're, Correct. Look how much you've learned in this, this yeah. past what, year or two years, or, you know. Learned a lot. Learned a lot. Um, yeah. And it's, you can go, if anybody is interested, uh, you can go, um, it's called Patreon page, P-A-T-R-E-O-N. And you can find different artists there. And most of them are, um, use unison pastels, whether they're going to be doing landscapes or seascapes or, or animals or people. A lot of them are portraits, people. And these artists, um, you learn a lot from them. I, I spent $5 a month on Emma Colbert and got so much information from her. And very, very early before I really started, you know, using anything, I, I gathered a bunch of oil paints or certain ones. And I, I paid $225 for five weeks to learn to oil paint from this one lady. And she's, she's very good. But she holds back a lot of information, you know. I don't hold back the information. I uh, people have approached me, you know, about how do you do this, how do you do that, and I tell them. Um, I was going to ask you, 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 you have a little group, or you had a little teaching session with a group, didn't you? Something I had a little friend? teaching session with with one friend, and I have a group that want me to do that, and we're going to get together in the fall because it. I just got too busy at that time so we're going to do it in the fall i'm going to set aside some time we're going to have a a wine and painting night and uh yeah and it's just a group of regular friends but they're going to pay me for it um i don't know they they want to pay me about 10 bucks i said five bucks is plenty you know just to show them how to do it and and, and to have fun give them you know but I, i'm going to leave it up to them they can have one of two pictures a, an animal or a you know, some kind of a landscape, small landscape, you know, thing. So, and I've had to do a landscape on one. I had a, a dog that I did. It was a black, black uh, lab. And his owner also wanted a bigger one showing him sitting by the water. So I had to figure out how to do all the little rocks and pebbles around him, how to do the water and how to do the, uh, what the background reflected in the water. And I thought, okay, well, this is interesting, <laughs> you know, and it turned out and he loved it. So, you know, he paid a lot more for that than he did the actual dog face, but he loved it all. He was thrilled to death. So that's, You're just learning so much from when we first talked. I'm just in yeah. awe of you. I'm yeah, it's it's fun, you know, mm -hmm. it, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it is fun. And then when that guy from the Mountain Democrat, I, I got this email. Oh yeah, T talk about that. Yeah, oh, that was crazy. I get this email and this man says he's with the Mountain Democrat and he wanted to know if, if I would be willing to do an interview about my art. And I'm like, is this guy for real? You know, so I, I went over to the website of the Mountain Democrat and to see who their writers were. And sure enough, he's in there. And I said, hmm. So I went back and I, I answered the email and I said, I said, hi, I says, it, it sounds okay. I says, but how did you hear about me? You know, I'm nobody. I, I, I'm blown away by the artists in the PAA. I mean, just all of you for different mm -hmm. things. I don't have a lot of imagination. And when you don't have a lot of imagination, somebody like Sue and some of the other ones I've learned and I see their work, it's like, good grief, I can't do that stuff, you know? Anyway, so I tell this guy, where'd you hear about me? And he said, that when I had to get a uh, business license, you go in, you pay for your license and all that, and you go through all this rigmarole. And then you got to take it down to the local newspaper. And you've got to put that in there for three months that you have this new business and the website. And I says, you're kidding. And then that costs over a hundred bucks. I'm like, criminy. Do I want to do this as a business? You know, because <laughs> anyway, so I did. And he said that his editor, went on my website and saw the animals I was doing and said, call this girl, call this lady. And uh, because they have an insert called Happy Healthy Pets, 
and I don't take them out in Democrats, so I don't know anything about it. And I guess they don't usually have pictures, but he wants to put a couple of pictures in there. So he's got one of me working on, you know, a cat. And then this, this big one that I did of these two Westies, um, I opened it because I was bringing it here to my friend. And when I opened it and he saw it all framed and everything, he just said, wow. And that made me feel good. <laughs> and he wanted my picture with the painting. So we got that. And uh, he did ask me a lot of questions like, how did I get started? And, you know, how did I get started doing people's animals? And what's the best thing I like when I'm doing someone's animal? What's the my favorite part? And I had to tell him it's when I do the eyes because I, I have it in my tablet and I can enlarge it so that I can get a lot of, of whatever detail is in the picture anyway. I says, and then they come to life. They just mm -hmm. come to life. It's just, it's really a, a cool feeling to see that, you know, and like there was a, a little uh, shepherd, the little Australian shepherd that I did. And the lady was telling me that this is my goofy one. So I made it so that his lip was kind of caught on his tooth, you know, and that, that wasn't hard to do. And she said, oh, you got it. <laughs> so little things like that, you know, and yeah. <laughs> That's and cool. I'm just having a ball. It's and I that's just, supposed to be out in September, right? Um, what's in the, September? The Captain oh, Healthy Pet. He said that it will probably be in September. That he'll call me and let me know or text me, email probably. Yeah. yeah. You have to, so I'll, you, I'll you check. Can, you can go down there and get some extra copies for yourself. Yeah, he said they would hold a few aside for me. Yeah. Good. Okay, because I've got family that wants one and a couple friends yeah so. that's nice you need it for your yeah. records yeah so that and let us know i mean i put it in the newsletter but um when we know that it's online i'll link it to the um to your in our newsletter i'll link it to their site okay. so people can see it too all right well yeah it, perfect our historian Penn slade keeps a record of anything that comes through the Mountain Democrat. She has a subscription that we sponsor for her. And so anytime any of you know you're getting press, draw it to Penny's attention. She can trap it from the newspaper and put it in our scrapbook. So we oh, really love right. it when you guys get press. And, and uh, Penny's working really hard to create that record for us. Maybe when we get back to face-to-face -face meetings, she'll bring the books and we'll get to take a look at what she's collected for us. Yeah, that That'd would be, be fun. Nice. Yeah, great. So I don't know if anybody has any questions. You guys know more than I do about art, but. <laughs> no, I, don't, I don't know if that's true. You certainly have done a lot of work. Um, at learning so much about your craft. And I was impressed from the very beginning with it. Uh, you and I sat a uh, member show together a uh, right. while back, maybe even before the pandemic, I don't remember, but we definitely sat one together and uh, had a chance to meet you at that point. And I had noticed your art showing up on next door. And I think you're fabulous and um, I wish that I could have the precision to express my imagination in the way that you're able to render these, these paintings for people. And also the way that you're able to give people such a unique memory of their pet. I know that it is yeah. so important to people. And it I is. congratulate you on you know, not driving the school bus anymore and getting to do something that it, it, you know, is really soul fulfilling. Um, yeah. So thank you. Thank you for today. And does anybody else have any questions for Maggie? I can show you how to drive a bus. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll learn that. For... <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Maggie, for, um, hey. uh, well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, All right, so it's my pleasure to introduce our member share of the month. Uh, that is Matt Harlan. He has been a contributing member of our organization for a few years now. He has a studio in Placerville up toward the Camino direction, and he has a home uh, over off of 80 in a more conventional place, but 
He spends a lot of time up here at his studio. Uh, he participates in our art tour event. And I personally want to thank him for building our website for art tours the last few years. He's been a real great contribution for us. And he will be stop number six on the tour this year. He's showing at his studio with Leonard James. And so we want to invite all of you to stop by and see Matt and Leonard um, on, uh, on the tour weekend. And today Matt is going to uh, talk to us about uh, his presentation is From the Ashes of Disaster, Grow the Roses of Success. And he'll talk to us about the Butte fire and how he's taken remnants of what was left after the burn to put into his artwork and create and give it a new life. So Matt, I'm going to mute myself and you can take it away. Thank you. And I'm going to actually, hopefully this doesn't mess anything up, but I'm going to try and record to my computer too. <laughs> but um, so yeah. my wife and I, um, a number of years ago, uh, had the opportunity of uh, buying some property. We were looking for a place that I could escape to. Um, Six years ago, I was in an accident, got a brain injury, couldn't do my other work anymore. And I went back to what I always have loved doing, which is, uh, which is art. And um, so we bought some property after a long search, ended up all the way up in Butte County, um, uh, a little bit east of uh, Paradise. And uh, let me, uh, I can start sharing my screen. Uh, let's see. Hopefully you can all see that. Um, and uh, I uh, we bought this this uh, this place uh, in a place called Concow. And uh, in November of uh, 2018, you probably all have heard about the campfire. It started about uh, six miles east of where our place was. And within an hour, um, Concow was burning, and not long after that, Paradise burned. Um, it was uh, about a month after that that uh, my wife and I were had the had the ability. They opened up the the area for us so, so that we could go and see what was left. And uh, as we were looking through the ashes, um, uh, the the chorus to a song that you may remember from an old movie from Disney, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. The chorus goes, from the ashes of disaster grow the roses of success. And uh, looking, looking at these, this is what, this is what the, the house looked like and what the, the uh, I don't know if you can see where my cursor is. This is the studio back here. This was the house. And um, and I think a number of you may have uh, been up to uh, Grizzly Flat or other places with, with, that were impacted by the Caldor fire. It looks a lot the same. And uh, so I, I was looking around and I saw these ashes and uh, from Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, the, the ashes of disaster grow the roses of success. And while I was poking around, I happened to see a lump of blue. And I looked at that and I thought, what is this? Um, and it was in, in my art studio on the, on the ground around the area where my work area was. And I figured that must be what's left of my ultramarine blue acrylic paint. Um, and that gave me an idea of how I could find the, the roses. I collected a bunch, I have about a gallon can worth of these, uh, uh, these chunks of burned wood that I gathered up and I thought, I'm gonna find some way I can make this into art. Um, I bought a uh, mortar and pistol so that I could grind it up into powder. I, uh, I then uh, just use uh, some crude tools of a, a a little a hand shovel and, and tough stuff to, to break it up into smaller pieces, put it into a put it into a, a container like that. 
And then I thought, okay, how do I make this into paint? Um, oh, well, actually, first of all, I, I, I actually did a, use, the, use the charcoal to create a, a drawing. And uh, so this is the, the first thing that I did. And actually, the, the realtor who helped us buy that property saw this, this sketch I did and asked to buy it. Um, then I then I was looking at okay so how do I make this into some into paint, and I went online and I found a, a company called Natural Pigments that uh, may, actually makes a watercolor paint making kit. Um, it includes uh, I had to buy the mortar and pestle separately, but it includes a, a, a glass uh, grinding slab, the muller. Uh, there's a palette knife in there. I've got plenty of palette knives. Um, get your own distilled water. The watercolor medium, which is this, uh, it's a gum arabic and glycerin. And they also had a bunch of different pigments that came with it. But I actually haven't used those pigments because I was more interested in just creating paint from the ground up uh, ashes of my uh, of my studio. Um, so now I'm going to show you a uh, uh, a what do they call it a um, uh, the the time lapse that's the word time lapse the, the brain injury is kicking in here I can't remember words the, the time lapse lapse video of me making uh, a batch of black paint and I'll just talk through it uh, you can see there's uh, you know, I've just put the Put the powder down there and then adding uh, a little bit of water and the uh, the medium and grinding it up with the molar to just get the make sure that the, the medium and the the uh, pigment all gets mixed together. And then I put it into a, a glass jar that I could use as my uh, uh, the, the, the paint pan that I, I can use in. in uh, in, in my painting of watercolor. Um, so I, this is the uh, the first watercolor that I did the first time I made that paint. And the interesting thing about it is um, it's the first one batch was really gritty. Lots of pieces of of burnt wood that uh, obviously weren't dissolved and, and but it actually gives an interesting character to it. Um, and uh, and actually, I can't get away from the grittiness. Uh, and in a little bit, I'll I'll tell you a little bit more about that. But this was the the first uh, the first watercolor painting that I did after the campfire. Um, then I had a, a an opportunity to talk with another artist, and she suggested that I try mixing this this ground up burnt wood into acrylic paint. And it was interesting. The first color that I tried um, just got me hooked. I said, this, this is a, a great thing to do. And, and I would really suggest that, you know, it's really easy. Just take the, the, the whatever pigment you want to add to your paint, whether it's burnt wood or maybe you've got something else. And, and I'll talk about the something else in a little bit. Uh, and just mix it in with your acrylic paint. You might need to add some more um, medium acrylic uh, matte medium or or uh, whatever to the to your your paint and uh, and some water but uh, you get some interesting results um here's uh here's a, another time lapse video of me adding the this uh pigment to matte medium and uh luckily it's it's uh, really sped up uh, doing this but you can see with the the a little bit of uh a lot of matte medium and some of the powder, you get a lot more transparent like you would expect and more powder and it gets more, uh, um, uh, more opaque. And you can see, uh, you know, this is lots of, uh, uh, you can't see it as well on the screen as if you had it uh, in front of you, but um, Sometimes I have to talk with a sandpaper expert and, and ask them what's the grittiness of this paint <laughs> because it's pretty gritty. You could I can almost look at it and say, well, I could almost use this to sand something. <laughs> it's it's uh, uh, it the 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 
the tactile feeling of it is is different from what you would expect it out of paint. Um, and I did that with this matte medium. I added it to titanium white, added it to, to burnt sienna. Interesting, the burnt sienna almost turns it into uh, gets turned into a, a, a burnt umber. Uh, it just uh, it just enhances the the color in different ways. Um, then the the first color that I ever tried mixing it with was this Hansa yellow, and uh, I'll show you the video of what happens. Um, it it didn't do at all what I was expecting, but add the 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 black to it and it turns into an interesting olive green. Um, and uh, the, the first time I did this video, I did it with uh, just a regular uh, video and it just was taking so long, I figured I'd redo it um, in the time lapse so you wouldn't have to suffer through the, the, the three minutes of video. But uh, here's a, an example of what, what I did with a uh, Hansa yellow and then the cadmium orange. Um, I also did it with some reds. And, and while you can't really tell in this, uh, this picture, uh, the, the magenta and the, uh, and the, the uh, ashes turns it into a really interesting burgundy color. Um, it's one of those things where I guess you gotta have to try it out and see what it looks like and see which, which parts you like. Um, I thought I'd share with you some of my watercolor and acrylic paintings that incorporate what I call concow black. Um, so this is this is a painting that I did uh, holding up um, that has a lot. You can tell it's got a lot of the the black in it. Um, I, I will notice as as you can read there. This is a a painting that uh, was selected to be included in a, a Crocker Art Museum exhibit that was put on by the Sacramento General Congress of Women. Um, and uh, the, if, if you know a little bit about my history with a brain injury and support groups, this, is, this is, has a lot to do with, with the importance of support groups for people who have, uh, whether it's a brain injury or other sort of trauma that they're getting through. Um, a here's a, a a detail of uh, of that painting, and you can see the a little bit more of the grittiness of uh, of that watercolor. It's it's not uh, a smooth kind of a thing, but uh, you look at it and you can tell that there's uh, um, it's not just a, uh, uh, a regular watercolor paint uh, watercolor paint. Um, I did this, uh, did, this is actually three paintings that I did, and uh, I put them all together into a gicle print. Um, again, this, this is representing the, the journey that I went through while I was uh, um, recovering from my brain injury, um, still recovering from my brain injury. And these three paintings also have a lot of uh, concow black in it. And you can look at the, uh, the detail of, of the one painting um, and, and you can see the, the little grains of, of ash that's in it. Um, I also have a, a number of paintings. These don't have as much of the, uh, uh, of the black concow paint in it, um, but uh, this is one of my paintings that's in a series of, of paintings I call See What I Can Do. It's their stories of remarkable children, children with, with rare disorders. Um, and another one that has a little bit of the, of the concow black in it. Um, you don't need to, to, I mean, I don't want to overshadow these paintings with just this, this black. Uh, but uh, but do want to be able to to add a little bit of it to to these paintings. Um, an acrylic painting I did a couple of years ago, as all of the unrest was going on around the country, um, feeling wanting to to have a call for unity. Uh, again, this one has a lot of the of concow black in the background and in the foreground. 
Uh, and actually, in, in this photograph, you can tell that there's there's chunks of of uh, of, of the uh, of that burnt wood that's uh, that's poking out in in this acrylic painting. Um, one of the paintings that I had in my burned down studio was a, a painting that I called Sudoku. Uh, and this next one is actually a collection of, uh, to replace that, I actually made a painting and then I decided I wanted to do something grander and do uh, um, actually nine of these Sudoku paintings and put them all together into one large painting. And each of these is a 16 by 16 inch wood panel. Um, and three of them have some significant amount of my concow black in it. Um, this is acrylic. Um, and uh, I'll show you this, the detail. This is one that's made just with the yellow and the, and the ashes. Um, you can, and so you can see how it kind of progresses from, from pure yellow to uh, like this. Here's the, the pure yellow to uh, the pure um, uh, black. Uh, and actually, I've got a, a close up of, of that. And again, you can see the grittiness of the uh, of the paint in these uh, in these sections. Um, here's what the uh, magenta in the concow black did. Um, and, and then there's a red and obviously red, white and in the concow black. Um, Here's a, another painting that I did. It has a little bit of, uh, of the concow black in it, uh, in the sh shadows and, and the, the hair on the one side over there, um, building blocks, trying to put myself back together again after, after a brain injury. Um, and uh, something that uh, I entered in the member show this last spring, um, Bristlecone pines. I suggest if you don't know about Great Basin bristlecone pine trees, you look them up. These are some fascinating trees. Um, just really fun to to represent and, and paint them. Um, I mentioned earlier that uh, my cousin suggested this book, and I'm sure there's other books out there. You might go looking for for books. Botanical inks. Basically, how you can make your own inks out of uh, wild plants, uh, garden produce, recycled food, whatever you might want to think. And I'm sure that you could do the same thing, not just inks, but you can make it into paint. Um, just something that, that you might try looking at. Um, so... I, I am going to be on the studio art tours, and I just had the idea this morning, you know, I, I'm going, if you want to come into my studio and use some of my ashes to create a small painting, I'd be happy to, to let you use some of that. I've got plenty of those, of that burned wood to, uh, to use. You might, I might need to, I might ask you to uh, use, uh, use my mortar, mortar and pestle to, uh, to grind some of that up so that we can use it, so you can use it some more. But I've got, uh, this is, I'm, I'm panning around what my studio looks like, uh, inviting you to, to come and, and see what I've got and, and make a small painting for yourself. And uh, when you're done, I've got a uh, nice little recliner here that you can sit in and rest. Um, from the ashes of disaster, let your creativity flow. And uh, I will stop sharing. And um, that was awesome, Matt. Let me know if you have any questions. <clears throat> very nice. Very nice. Yeah, that was amazing. I'm I'm so glad that we both recorded this because I think this whole meeting, although a little underattended is gonna be extremely well received once we get it posted up on YouTube. I'm really happy we're gonna have the opportunity for more of our members to see this because you guys were both outstanding. Thank you, Matt, for that presentation. I really enjoyed seeing a little more of your art. And then the process of you making both the watercolor and the uh, acrylic was interesting. The painting that you did for the Sacramento show with the rock, I'm just amazed at the amount of depth and texture you got with that watercolor. That was 
amazing, amazing, amazing. So really good work. And, and that's a profound piece too. So congratulations on that. Thank you. Um, anybody else uh, want to comment about this presentation or are we going to move on to my announcements? I have one, I have one question for Matt, if I can. Sure. This may sound like a weird question. Was the, the charred wood that you gathered, was that from the wood that the studio was built from and yes. or was it wood so it was only for the studio wood two two by fours and whatnot that was in in the studio so nothing pine or any no trees no trees actually you know if if you look at the if you want i can i can go back and reshare let's see um i can show you the uh, the picture from um, from uh, that I took that I showed at the start. Um, so this is uh, it, it wasn't really easy to find wood that was left over, but um, but there were a couple places where there was some good good wood that I could could collect. But you can notice around here, you know, most of the trees were okay. Um, yeah. it, um, we have since sold that property. We decided we this we didn't want to to rebuild at that time. Um, but uh, you know, there even though a lot of the houses in that area were burned, uh, there there was um, the, the trees did a lot did fairly well in surviving. Mm. Well, I think it's amazing what you did to, um, I think it's amazing your process and what you went through. That had to have been healing for you too, or continue to be healing for you. Yes, it is. Yeah, it, quite amazing. And certainly not as poignant, Matt, but most of us up here have burn piles where we burn our, you know, slash from our tree trimming. And so we do have an abundance of charcoal that we could work with on our properties. And there is a personal touch to that. I really, especially because I paint a lot with acrylics, love the way that the darkening and the texture both happen when you blended it with the acrylic paints. Watching the yellow turn olive was crazy awesome. But also just that texture that you would get from putting the bits in there is something that I'm I I find extremely interesting to think about working with with on some of my abstracts. So yeah, I really appreciate you sharing with us today. And um, I'm going to go out and raid the burn pile pretty soon and put it in a jar <laughs> <laughs> before it gets hot again. You know, we've only got a couple of months before the burn pile gets active again. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, I mentioned at uh, the beginning of the meeting, I'm not sure that all of you were on here, but Lucia shared a lot of her frames. She's downsizing her studio. She shared a lot of her frames with me. They're in Art Barn. If any of you are interested in seeing frames, some are used, some are new, bring your sizes over, go through Art Barn. And all she's asking is that you make a small donation to our outreach fund if you take some frames. So if anybody's interested in any frames, come on down. Um, I also wanna thank you all for participating in our survey. We had 51 responses. That's a really good response to the survey that we sent out uh, that was focused primarily on what you want to see in our member meetings and what you want to see in our member shows. I will say that there is a strong preference from the group to resume our in-person meetings. And we're going to endeavor to do that as quickly as we can. And uh, also uh, a strong preference to having presenters at our member meetings, live presentations, such as the one we've had today, came, came up, ranked up very high in the survey as well as continuing with our member shows at the government center. So um, all of those things were things that kind of perked to the top in the survey. And we will be definitely taking your wishes um, into our plans for the next year. 
Our call to artists for the 56th National Mother Load Art Exhibition is open. That's going to close mid-September. Our venue this year is the MACC in Rancho Cordova. It's a beautiful community-supported gallery in the Old Mill Station. Come on, are you ball? This year, there will be at least two new features for our artists, significantly less commission. You'll keep 80% of any sales. And Cheryl Gleason, the gallery manager, is supplying the goodies for our reception so the artist won't be asked to bring a food donation for the reception. It's going to be an evening reception. Our show judge, Barbara Berg, will offer a critique. It should be a lovely evening. Go to PlacervilleArts.com for the prospectus and the link to entry if you haven't already entered. If you're not a member of PAA and would like to join, registration links are available at our website under the Join tab. PAA members who, whose entries are juried into the Motherload Show are eligible for additional war, awards. We give additional ribbons and monetary awards to Placerville Arts members, so you're eligible for extra things. Uh, we currently have 135 members, and we'd love to see your name in our end-of-the-year roster. So if you're not already a member, join now. That way you'll make it into the book for the end of the year. <clears throat> Excuse me. Our next member show is October 10th to 14th at the El Dorado County Government Center. You do need to be a member to enter that show. Art Tours is the third and fourth weekend in September. This is probably the third time we've said that today. I covered it, Matt covered it, and now we're covering it again. But what you may not know is this year we have 11 studios and 27 artists on the tour. And we plan for our next member meeting in September to bring you art tours live during the meeting. So we're planning to go to a few studios um, and uh, let um, a reporter on site there show us around and tempt you and tantalize you out to go and visit studios that you enjoy. Um, I have one studio, Joyce Martin, that doesn't think she can handle it on her own. And so Jerry Litwin is going to go over and be an ace reporter that day and get uh, Joyce Martin up and running so we can see her lovely location as well as the three artists that she has there that day. Thank you, Jerry, for that. Uh, Darby Patterson will also be uh, presenting at our September meeting. She's going to talk to us about bronze work and her Calder or Tribute Memorial. If you happen to be on Main Street today, Darby's down there with her hat out and you can make a contribution in person to her memorial today uh, in front of um, 360 Art Gallery, I believe. Our next board meeting will be Friday, September 2nd, 10 to noon at the Rayleigh's Plasterville Conference Room. As always, any, any member is invited to attend. We have openings on the board as well as advisory and committee volunteer opportunities. The best way to find your fit with PAA is to join us at the board meetings and see what, what we're working on. And we're happy to have you. Our second art lunch will be Wednesday, September 14th. Check the September newsletter for time and location details. We had a fun lunch uh, this month. We had about 10 people join us for that. And it was just lovely to sit and chat for an hour over lunch. Um, I, If anybody else has anything to say, let's do it now. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you all next month. Thank you all for joining us. I'm going to stop the recording. <laughs> Thank you, Matt and Maggie. Thank you, everybody. That's a good meeting. Thank you, Maggie.